This is going to be a quick tutorial on making your first person animations looking like they're shooting bullets with the particle system in Blender. I'm going to start off by making an Igosphere and messing it up in edit mode and going to turn that into my muzzle flash. Once we have our Icosphere, I'm going to put on a emission shader that's kind of in the warm tones uh, closer to orange and red and you're just going to really turn it up to where the Icosphere just reads as white. We'll duplicate this icosphere and change the shader to something that is almost transparent. And with that, you're going to change the blending mode to alpha hashed, and you're going to put the transmission all the way down to 0 0.00 something. This is going to be the gas or smoke particle, and it's going to work by layering on top of each other. And so that's why you don't want it to have any transmission because we're going to spawn a thousand of these uh, when we do call them in later. Next up we're going to be creating a spark and that's going to be done by taking a plane, squishing it down and extruding the edges and make it look like a grain of rice. I'll we'll also slap an emission shader on this spark here and it helps to be organized. Make sure you name all your items and put it into a collection and I'm going to call mine particles. For the bullet I'm going to duplicate the one that's part of the mesh. I'm going to take it out, separate it. And then I'm going to move the bullet itself into the casing. And then I'm going to go into the back where the primer is. I'm going to inset it and then I'm going to extrude it back so it looks like the primer has been fired. This stuff here can be super quick and dirty. It's not going to be on screen for very long. And it's just a nice little touch. Next I'm going to create the source of our particles. That's going to be a plane which we'll delete the face of. And you can do that by going into face select, pressing X, and then selecting only faces. And so it will retain the four vertices and the edges of that plane. Then I'll duplicate that. One will be for the ejection port and one will be for the muzzle. I'll be moving one of the planes right where the ejection port chamber is. And then the other one I'm gonna be bringing to the end of the barrel or the muzzle. And I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees so it's perpendicular with the barrel. You'll then put a child of modifier on both of the planes and it'll attach them to the armature of the weapon and have them parented to the main weapon bone. Now onto the fun part of creating the particles. You'll select the plane on the ejection port and you're gonna go to the particle editor tab. That's gonna be the tab with the three lines coming out of it under the blue wrench. Nothing will be here until you add your first particle by hitting the plus in the top right. Here we can name our particle, set the number of particles we want, and we'll define the frame start. And we'll just put that as one value and you don't need another end value for one, you just want to spawn a single particle. This tutorial will be for having a single fire. If you want to do a full auto sequence, all you need to do is increase the end time and then define the number by however many rounds are within your clip or magazine. By default, the particle that's going to be here is going to be this big gray ball that's called a halo and it's just going to be falling down whenever you scrub over or play. Now we're going to define the direction that this particle is going. We're going to make it look like the bullet is shooting out of here. To do so, you're going to start messing around under the velocity tab by giving the normal value a bit higher until it starts kind of going up and out. And also start adjusting the object aligned under X, Y, Z until it's going the direction that you'd like it to. Once you have the angle looking okay, you're going to drop down to the render tab and under render as, you're going to change it from halo down to object. Under instance object, we are going to define that to be our casing that we've created. It'll look like it's leaving the gun without any rotation. So to define that, we're going to head over to the rotation tab. We'll turn up randomize and we'll also select dynamic and start adjusting some of the settings under that. I don't really know what everything does here, but I just kind of keep playing with the settings until it looks about right. Awesome possum. So we're going to move over to the muzzle and we're going to create kind of a tracer effect so we can kind of see the bullet going down. This isn't realistic, but it looks cool. 
because we tilted the plane at 90 degrees, it's already kind of coming out out of the barrel and you just have to adjust some of the normal velocity until it really just starts like looking like shooting out. And you can crank this up to whatever you're comfortable with and you'll probably need to adjust it once we replace it with the spark mesh. If you don't see your particle right away, you're going to have to go down into the object area and under render, you're going to have to play with scale until you get something that feels right. And if it still isn't feeling right, play with the object scale and object rotation check marks and that might fix some things. And if it's still kind of giving you issues, check where the pivot point is with your objects and also mess with the scaling in edit mode of your mesh. I started messing around with bringing the muzzle flash in as a particle, but it wasn't being the friendliest uh, when it was just being called in for a single frame and the lifetime was kind of being a little too long. So I decided to just animate that as an object and bring it in front of the muzzle for a single frame. Muzzle flash stuff works a bit better during full auto sequences and with that I'll mess around with even distribution checked off under source tab and also messing around with the randomness values under rotation tab as well as the scale randomness under render tab. We'll be layering this with some sparks that are going to be shooting out of the muzzle and almost kind of like a firework way. But the trick with this is to make it really subtle. For this one you're going to bring the number under emission tab up to anywhere from 300 to 1000, whatever just kind of feels right. You're going to mess with the randomized velocity and then you also want to go down to the physics tab and start messing around with Brownian and that's going to kind of be like another randomizer as well as the drag and damp but those latter two don't do too much in this situation for this effect. But it's always worth a try to just kind of adjust everything and see what sticks. We'll create another particle to get a smoke or a gas effect going on. And you'll pretty much do the same thing that you did for the little sparks and flash. The cool thing with setting their transmission uh, to a really low amount is that they'll kind of be blending through each other. And when you have these stacked on top of each other by calling them like a thousand, it'll have a really nice like softening effect as they bloom out. You'll also play around with the lifetime value to make sure that it's leaving the viewport in the right time. It'll help to do viewport renders so you can see how these subtle particles are really behaving. It's not realistic, but it sure does look cool. I'll also go and create the part spark effect from the ejection port as well as another smoke. With all of this, you'll be jumping between particles and tweaking them and just until they feel right and play with each other nicely. To really sell the feeling of a firing happening, I'll play around with the f-stop value within my camera to where it kind of blurs during the firing and it can really give some nice uh, like bokeh, bokeh effect to the sparks and they'll be even a bit more subtle. Well, thank you so much for listening, and here are the final results with some added sound. Enjoy.